yeah, we're going to learn how to make um, generic applications in the HIS2. Um, just going to uh, quickly mention that, um, yeah, what, what we're going to cover. Um, so for the first part, um, I'll start off by giving uh, a quick overview uh, of what makes a good generic application. Um, and then I'll talk about uh, what the requirements are. Um, and then I'll briefly mention some of the approaches uh, that you can take uh, as you're developing your application. Uh, and then after the break, um, like I said uh, earlier, Austin will expand on this introduction and talk uh, more about how to actually use uh, these tools that are available to you uh, to be able to build a generic application. Um, so you'll see how to use the, the data store and how to support uh, translations uh, in your application. Um, yeah, okay, so first of all, why, um, why are generic applications important or what does it mean to be generic? Uh, so if you have a generic uh, application, it means that it can be used across different instances and use cases. Uh, so basically applications that are uh, flexible and generic are useful for uh, a large audience and, and can help many DHS2 users uh, and the DHS2 community in general. So that's, that's why um, this is an important topic. Um, so these are the three um, most important uh, criteria that are required uh, to, um, to have a generic DHS2 application. Uh, it should work on all supported DHS2 versions, uh, can work on any given DHS2 instance, and um, it, it uh, should support translations. Um, I will um, talk more about these three points in my next uh, slides. Yeah, version support. Okay, so you have to make sure that the app works uh, in all supported versions. Um, so this means that uh, your users might not be on the same DHS2 version as in your application or as, as yeah, uh, yeah, they might not be uh, on the same uh, version that you're using. Uh, so you will need to test all supported versions to see if it still works. Um, so the current version is supported, of course, and uh, the last three versions before that as well. Um, the current one was released last week, uh, so just recently, which is version 2.36, and the previous ones that are supported are, uh, well, 2.35, 2.34, and 2.3, uh, uh, um, and uh, you can check more information about this, uh, just I'm going to quickly um, show you where you can find, uh, if you go to the website, uh, the dhs2.org website, you go to resources and then you go to downloads. Um, this is well, under Core DHS2 software. This is where you can find the uh, release notes uh, and see which versions are supported and which ones are not. Uh, you will see that uh, these versions are not. Um, and if you check the release notes, then you can um, see if there are any breaking changes or any relevant uh, things that uh, could affect your, your application. Um, also, there are notes that you can read on how to upgrade to later um, uh, versions. Um, yeah, so then how do you, um, how do you do that? Um, uh, yeah, so if, if you want to make a generic application that supports all these versions, uh, then you would, of course, start by testing against these versions and see if your application works as expected. Um, and if you do encounter any discrepancies uh, in the API, for example, uh, or features that are not supported in an earlier uh, version, but are supported in a later, later version, so then um, you could uh, handle these discrepancies in the code base itself. Um, this means that uh, you keep one single code base for your application. Um, so for example, you have a, a master branch and you can handle the differences between uh, DHS2 and the application code itself. Um, for example, if there's a, a particular feature that is not supported in an earlier version, uh, then you could uh, conditionally uh, render this particular feature depending on the version that supports uh, this particular feature. Um, so 
the advisable thing to do here would be to handle all this uh, differences within a single code base instead of having to maintain three or four different code bases uh, for each version. Um, I hope this was clear. Um, okay, um, so like uh, I said before, a generic application should be able to work on any given instance. And here we have some of the best um, practices and, and approaches that you can take in order to do that. Um, maybe I, not every, everything, but uh, yeah, I'm just going to touch upon some, some of them. Um, we will talk more about application uh, configuration after the break, um, uh, but these are basically some of the do's and don'ts. Um, so like it says there on the left, uh, each uh, instance is backed by its own database and ID, uh, which means that if you hard code the ID for your instance, this uh, may work for you uh, from your own instance, but it may not work on any other instances. Uh, so this is not recommended as you can see here on the left, it says don't hard code IDs. Um, instead, what's um, recommended or the current uh, best practice is to configure this information programmatically uh, in your application when the uh, application uh, first loads. Uh, and this is when the DHS2 data store uh, comes into play. <laughs> so you can basically use the data store to store your data uh, and um, configure those metadata IDs for a specific instance. Uh, again, Austin, we'll, we'll talk more about this in the second part. Um, in addition to an instance having its own database, uh, it can also have its own individual configuration. Uh, for example, one instance might uh, have support for some features and another instance might not support uh, the same features. So it could be uh, yeah, great to check whether the instance that the app is currently running on, whether it has the correct configuration in place uh, when the application runs. Um, so yeah, it's, it's better not to assume that things will work. Uh, so it will be best uh, to let the user know if something is not working on uh, the screen instance or uh, yeah, allow them to, um, to request additional configuration if, if it's needed. Uh, so for an application to be generic, it must have uh, or it must support translations um, of the interface in your application. Uh, and of course, um, this is a very important aspect of having a generic application um, as you would want uh, your users to be able to use your application in different languages. Um, and you can do that through the D2I18N package. And this stands for international, internationalization. This is a difficult word to pronounce and maybe that's why they abbreviated. <laughs> Uh, so uh, what this tool does is that um, you can use it to translate strings uh, or all the text um, in your application uh, from English, for example, to different languages. Um, and this package um, can also be used to translate dates and uh, numbers into different locales. Uh, in the next session, uh, session uh, you will learn more about how to actually, oh, how this, this uh, package uh, works under the hood and uh, more importantly, how uh, you can uh, include this uh, package or import it and use it in your application. Um, second small point here is just a small recommendation uh, when using translations um, is that the name field is not translated uh, for metadata, only display name. So for example, if you use the field uh, name in your metadata like org units, um, it won't be translated if you have translation set up. Um, yeah. Um, okay, I think this is uh, my, yeah, I have two more slides and then I'll be, yeah, I'll be done. Um, so generic applications, they live in, um, in the app hub. Um, I can actually show you quickly, uh, but 
this is uh, yeah okay so the, the unharvest ops this is going to change the interface uh, there will be uh, major improvements so this is how it looks like today but you will learn more about uh, the UpHub uh, this Friday and uh, what uh, are the, the yeah the new updates and new things so it's uh, yeah you should look forward to it um, yeah okay so back to my uh, presentation um, so what is the UpHub actually? Um, so it's, it's, it's a collection uh, of applications that are generic and that have been published by the DHS2 community. Um, so you can find applications that were submitted by uh, develop other developers, organizations, and, and the core team as well. Um, so this is where you can go and find applications that uh, you might find useful uh, and also submit your applications, of course. Um, and uh, these applications are reviewed every week by the DHS2 core team. Uh, but again, uh, you know more about this and the, the uh, up, uh, hub guidelines and all those things uh, on Friday. Uh, okay, so this is um, just to introduce uh, some of the tools that uh, we will see in um, the second part. Um, first, we have the data store. Uh, sorry, yeah, the data store. So as, as I briefly mentioned, you can configure your application information um, using the data store endpoint to store specific JSON data for all users. So for example, if you have application, uh, sorry, for example, if your application offers some kind of user preferences, uh, then uh, that would be the ideal place to store that information. Um, and then the user data store endpoint uh, is, um, uh, would allow you to store user specific data for the current user. Um, you can find more information on the DHS2 web API documentation uh, to learn more about this uh, endpoints and things like uh, namespaces, keys and values. And I think, uh, yeah, uh, this is just an introduction again. Uh, but then there's also the app service data store uh, package uh, that is available to you to interact with both these endpoints. and. Um, you will learn how to install it, how to um, uh, include this in your application later on. And then in addition to this, we have the uh, data store management application, which you can use as well to configure uh, this data using uh, this app, uh, which can be very, uh, very convenient, very handy. Uh, and then lastly, um, I briefly mentioned earlier about the D2 um, I18N package that you can use to support translations. Uh, so you can use this library to do that. Um, one thing to note about this tool is that uh, uh, if you have initialized your application uh, using the application platform, or if it's yeah, if you started your application using uh, yeah the app platform, then uh, that we we did, we see this. Sorry, we saw this in um, in the first workshop. Then this tool is already included in your application. Uh, so if you use D2 app scripts init the command from your terminal uh, to create a new application, uh, then when you run um, yarn start from your terminal, then you will see a folder uh, with uh, the name, uh, a folder that's called uh, i18n in your project that's generated automatically for you um, when you uh, yeah, initialize your application. So you don't need to install this uh, separately or set this up. Uh, it's, it's, it's done for you. Um, yeah, but you'll be able to see these folders and um, what's generated when you, when you do that. Uh, there's a template that's generated and you will see how to, how to, um, how to do that uh, during the exercises. Um, and I think this is, uh, yeah, this is, this is all I have. 